Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today we are doing another top list video where I actually ask my followers which Kurdish leader they trust and this is what they came up to. Today we're gonna go and look at the top 19 Kurdish leaders out there and we are only doing those who are alive at the moment. So basically I put out 19 different leaders for different parties in all of Kurdistan, Bashur, Bakur, Rosalat and Rojava. And I let my followers answer whether they trust them or not. And today we're going to look over all the results from the 19th place to number one. And we're going to discuss why they are on that place. If you want to vote in polls just like this, be sure to follow us on Instagram, everything about Kurdistan. And as always, don't forget to like this video comment your opinion down below let me know which leader that you trust and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any further videos on this channel now without further ado let's get into the video so on the 19th place we got Bafal Talabani Bafal Talabani represents the PUK party which was created by his father Jalal Talabani PUK has its headquarters in Slemani Bashu, which is occupied by Iraq. And in our poll, 13% hit that they trust Bafel. That makes up to 190 votes. As much as 1,281 persons voted no, which means that they didn't trust Bafel. Now, how come people don't trust Bafel? Well, during the Kurdistan independence referendum of September 2017, Bafel was appointed to be responsible for mediating between the top level leadership of the KRG, Iraq and the international community. Bafel worked for an alternative delayed vote solution, although accepted by the main actors both internally and externally, the solution was ultimately rejected by Masoud Barzani. In the aftermath of the referendum, as Kurdistan lost Kirkuk and Shingal for example, Bafel blamed the loss of Kirkuk and all rich regions on the decision of the Kurdish leadership to go ahead with a referendum of independence. He called the decision a colossal mistake, saying that the US proposal to postpone the referendum by two years should have been accepted and that such a suggestion was on the table. This would, according to Bafel, avoid the current situation in which Iraq federal forces regained control of areas managed by the Kurds since 2014. In October, Iraqi forces took control of Kirkuk province after intense fighting against Kurdish Peshmerga forces. Bafel Talabani purportedly ordered his military forces to withdraw from the region, allowing the Iraqi army and the Shia militia Popular Mobilization Forces, Hajj al-Shabi, to re-establish control of the region. For this, he has been criticized by many of the Kurdish people for the betrayal of the Kurdish struggle for independence. Bafel, however, strongly denies the accusations, calling them baseless claims. And this is why Bafel Talabani doesn't have so much trust among the Kurdish people and among our voters. Let's go over to number 18 where we got Shashwar Abdul Wahid. He belongs to a party he created himself, which is the New Generation Movement. It is also located in Bashuri, Kurdistan, and 20% of our voters voted that they trust Abdul Wahid. This means that as much as 80% voted no, that they didn't trust him. In votes, we got 281 voting yes and 1,112 people voting no. So let's look at why people don't trust Shashwar Abdul Wahid. So the hate against Shashwar comes from two sides. The first one criticizing his business and economic benefits from every project that he makes. Other side for his way of working against the Kurdish referendum in 2017 where he launched a no for now campaign to explain the economic and political risks of saying yes to the Kurdish referendum 2017. He also called the referendum an excuse by Kurdish leaders to remain in power, making Barzani followers hating him on one side 
and people that is against the KRG movement also hating him for adding to the corruption and inequality in KRG. So on the 17th place we got Lahur Talabani which is the nephew of Jalal Talabani. As we can guess, he belongs to the PUK as well. He got 22% of the votes, which is 286 yes votes and 1011 no votes. So why does he come this far down on the list? We got two reasons for this. The first one is that he, alongside his cousin, Bafel Talabani, got a lot of criticism for his role in the 2017 Kurdistan referendum. The other side is basically that Lahur belongs to the elite of the KRG government, which by the opposition is very accused and criticized for having a lot of corruption among themselves. On 16th place, we got Neshirvan Barzani, Belonging to the KDP party in Bashuri Kurdistan occupied by Iraq, he got 29% of the trust vote which is 478 yes votes and 1145 no votes. So let's ask ourselves why does the president of KRG get so much mistrust among our followers? Well, Neshirvan Barzani have been president in Bashur for two years since 2019 and during this period he has done some good things we can't deny that but the corruption is still high people don't have access to clean water or electricity and the unemployment and lack of salary is still on the table so Barzani has a lot of things to improve and to fix which he hasn't done above that we also got the fact that Barzani basically got his power through his name. He didn't really achieve his role as president, he just happened to be a Barzani and therefore he got a position within the party which opened up for him to become president. Same thing goes for the Talabani sons and cousins and same thing goes for the rest of the Barzani family. So basically that is one of the criticisms that Barzani have got. Otherwise we all know that Barzani have made a lot of achievements in the equality between different ethnicities in Kurdistan. This is one thing that he has got a lot of praises from, but there is a lot of challenges and stuff that Barzani haven't fixed yet, and this is where his criticisms come. On the 15th place, we got Kuba Talabani, which is the other son of Jalal Talabani. He belongs to the PUK, which is in Bashur, and he got 30% of the trust which is 428 yes votes and 998 no votes. Well, as we can see, he doesn't have as much mistrust as his brother, Bafel Talabani. However, he also has some lack of trust, which comes from three things. Mainly, him defending the acts of his brother. Secondary, that he is among the elite in the KRG government which connects him, just as you said before, with corruption, with stealing money, and thirdly, because he is born into his seat. He didn't achieve his seat, he just happened to be a Talabani and therefore got the chance to become the deputy prime minister of the Kurdistan region. And this is the main reasons for why people don't trust him either. Now, on the 14th place, we got Mustafa Hijiri, he is the head of the KDPY. This is located in Roj Halad, which is Iranian occupied Kurdistan. And Mustafa Hijiri got 32% of the trust votes, which is 405 yes votes and 862 no votes. Before we go into why Mustafa Hijiri doesn't get the support that he maybe should have, let's go into the 13 because number 13 and number 14 will have the same arguments. So, on the 13th place, we got Abdullah Muhtadi, which is the head of the Komala party. It is also located in Rojhalat, Iranian occupied Kurdistan, and Abdullah got 36% of the votes, which is 437 yes votes and 769 no votes. So why did these people get so low trust rates? Well, basically, many Kurds doesn't know about these two leaders. They are generally unknown among Kurds, so people doubt if they really should trust them or not. 
Secondary, when we look at the PDKY leader, number 14, he is a nationalistic leader and he is a KDPY leader, which is in general opposed by those who support the PKK movement. So, those who generally support PKK won't support the KDPY leader by natural reasons. The same thing goes for the number 13, which is Komala, the Komala leader, which are communists in their ideology, which basically makes the nationalistic Kurds not supporting Abdullah Muhtadi. Another argument for these two not being supported are their historical achievement in Kurdistan. Both have done a lot for the Kurds, at least if you look at it historically. The reason they both got a big support in Rojhalat is due to their historical resistance in the region. But they haven't done as much in modern time as they've done in history. In the modern time, they have actually just gone and supported other Iranian opposition groups which have got a lot of criticism among the local Kurdish people. At 12th place, we got the former president of KRG, Masoud Barzani. So he belongs to the KDP, which is in Bashur, Iraqi occupied Kurdistan, and he got 37% of the votes, which is 620 yes votes and 1077 no votes. Masoud Barzani was the president of KRG for many years. He has been praised as a great leader among some parts of Kurdistan and criticized as a bad leader in other parts of Kurdistan. Now the criticism comes from the corruption, from the poverty and from the money stealing policies that happened in KRG during Barzani's rule. Masoud Barzani was specifically criticized for how long his terms of being president and leader of Kurdistan actually was. According to constitution, he had only rights to be in the presidency for eight years, where after four years he could be re-elected, but after eight total years he couldn't be elected anymore. Officially, he has been president in KRG since 2005 until 2017, which is an amount of 12 years, four years more than he was allowed to. Masoud Barzani and Jalal Talabani came into a conflict of power which would lead to the first Kurdish civil war. Basically, the criticism comes from his many years in the post, from the policies of corruption, from the different policies that he has been leading KRG into, but also due to his choice of fighting against his own people, and I'm talking about PKK and PUK, while getting support from Kurdish enemies, such as Saddam Hussein once upon a time, and in recent times, Erdogan and Turkey. Now, Barzani have also been praised among the Kurds, for his way of advertising the Kurdish autonomous region, for his way of putting Kurdistan on the map, and for his way of holding a Kurdistan referendum when everybody else said no, he stood by it, whether it was a way of keeping his power as opposition say or not, we can discuss this in another video, but the praise comes from him sticking to that choice. On the 11th place, we got Said Yazdan Pana. He is the leader of PAK, which is located in Bashur, Iraqi occupied Kurdistan, and he got 46% of the trust, which is 577 yes votes and 687 no votes. Now, who are PAK and why doesn't he get that much of trust that he maybe is entitled to? Well, PAK stands for Kurdistan Freedom Party. The support for Pak and Said comes from the fact that they actually stood firmly in Kirkuk and fought for the safety of the city during the 2017 invasion by Iraqi militias. However, they are also criticized for corruption, just the fact that the son of Said Yazdanpana drives a $100,000 Lexus car in Slemani says it all. On 10th place, we got Siamand Muini, which is the head of Pijak, which is located in Rojhalat, Iranian-occupied Kurdistan.
he got 51% of the votes and for the first time we got a majority of the trust among our list. That is 689 yes votes and 666 no votes. Now Siamand is a PKK friendly leader and Pijak is a PKK branch in Rosh Halat. This leader automatically gets the yes vote from many PKK supporters. Pijak is also very famous for trying to implement the female revolution in two Rosh Halat which other parties aren't that good at. However, totally it seems like the other parties still got more popularity in Rosh Halat while Pijak got a lot of support from other parts of Kurdistan. On the ninth place we got Salih Muslim which belongs to the PYD and for the first time we got a Rojava politician in our list. He got 53% of the votes which is 677 yes votes and 592 no votes. So Salih Muslim is the former leader of the PYD who led the party during the ISIS war. He is very close to the people of Kurdistan since unlike other leaders of Kurdistan Salih Muslim actually got kids that have fought and died within the Kurdish question and I'm talking about his son which name is Shervan Muslim who actually became a YPG martyr after dying on the combat field fighting Al-Qaeda linked Al-Nusra front in 2013. Salih Muslim have been hunted by Turkey for a long time and have won a lot of heart among the Kurdish people. There is not many actions that Salih Muslim have done that would make people hate him. However, he is a PKK loyal politician which means that he automatically due to the unity among Kurds will get a lot of no votes from nationalistic Kurds. On the 8th place we got Murat Karayan which is the current head leader of PKK and for the first time we got a Bakr leader in our list. He got 53% of the votes which is 801 yes votes and 714 no votes and the PKK leader is a controversial thing. The PKK is recognized as a terrorist group among many European countries however I would like to call this recognition a corrupt recognition because many of it comes from the relationship with Turkey with different kind of conspiracy choices by different countries we're not gonna go into that in this video but like this video if you want me to make a video about the recognition of the PKK. Murat Karelan is an armed leader hunted by many people out there which means that he got a lot of haters, he got a lot of opposition and a lot of criticism. Being head of the PKK automatically gives you a lot of criticism from nationalistic Kurds and Barzani supporters just as being a KDP leader gives you automatically criticisms from the PKK movement. That is just how it is. Number 7 we got Abdullah Öcalan the symbolic leader of PKK which have been in prison since 1999. He is another leader from the Bakur Turkish occupied Kurdistan and he got 65% of the votes which is 1135 yes votes and 618 no votes. Öcalan is loved among the Kurdish people for many reasons. His constant struggle for the Kurdish cause nobody can take from him. However the criticisms comes a lot from his past where he during the 80s and the beginning of the 90s did some less good choices which he himself have regretted both in jail but also before actually being captured. Abdullah Öcalan has also got some criticism for his policy of not wanting to aim for a Kurdish independent country. Instead he aims for developing the Kurdish human rights and the coexistence between different ethnicities and religions in the society that would work under democratic confederalism. Nationalistic Kurds automatically criticize Öcalan for this way of thinking. On the sixth place we got Pervin Buldan and for the first time we got an HDP representative. 
Now, HDP is probably the most supported Kurdish party out there. It is located in Bakur, which is Turkish occupied Kurdistan, and Pervin got 66% of the votes, which is 893 yes votes and 466 no votes. So who is Pervin? Pervin is basically the co-leader of the HDP party. She took over after Selahattin Demirtas as he was imprisoned in 2016. HDP is a party that have gone through hell. And what's nice about this party is that they are doing all of this success only by democratic means, which is that they haven't openly supported PKK, they haven't openly talked about fighting Turkey with weapons. They haven't killed anyone, hurt anyone, or done anything bad in the Kurdish cause. They only are trying to achieve success through democratic means. And for this, they have a lot of support from the world. The policy by Turkey to capture and imprison people within the HDP have just evolved the support for the party. And this is why Pervin and anyone within the HDP automatically would get a lot of support from the Kurdish people. On the fifth place, we got Zilan Wejin, which is the female leader of Pijak. Now, Pijak has a female leader, it has a male leader, and Zilan is the female leader of the party. It is, as we said before, located in Rojhalat, Iranian-occupied Kurdistan, and Zilan got 68% of the votes. Now, that is 989 yes votes and 471 no votes. And the arguments are same here, just as the former argument for Siamand Muini. So be sure to check that out, the same arguments go for Zilan Wejin. On fourth place, we got Maslum Kobani, which is the SDF general located in Rojava, Syrian-occupied Kurdistan. Maslum Kobani got 68% of the trust which is 1049 yes votes and 505 no votes. So the strong support by Muslim Kobani is basically his part in the war against ISIS, where Muslim has shown a strong leadership and a trustworthy leadership, which have improved the Kurdish rights at the same time as Muslim Kobani have succeeded to form some kind of relationship with the Syrian government without selling off themselves too much. Another thing Muslim Kobani was praised for was his action plan which he came up together with the United Nations to aim for preventing the enlistment of child soldiers in the armed forces of the YPJ. Muslim Kobani is very close to Abdullah Öcalan and is PKK friendly which, as we've said many times before, gives him an automatic opposition against himself. Now let's go over to the third place, where we got Figen Yüksekdag. She belongs to the HDP, which is Bakuri, Kurdistan, Turkish occupied Kurdistan, and she got 69% of the votes, which was 889 yes votes and 394 no votes. Figen was one of Selahattin Demirtas's closest allies, which made the pulse of the support towards her risen a lot. She have been within the leader of HDP during its most noticeable moments, and her CEO leadership position was revoked by the Turkish courts on March of 2017, following a six-year prison sentence for disturbing terrorist propaganda. This opposition by Turkish state basically gave Figen the support she needed to evolve some kind of foundation within the Kurdish sympathy. On the second place we got Rojda Felat, which is a YPJ commander. YPJ is the female branch of the Rojava troops, which means that this leader belongs to the Rojava part of Kurdistan, Syrian occupied Kurdistan. She got 79% of the votes, which is 1053 yes votes and 276 no votes. So let's look at why people support her and why people doesn't support her. Rojda Felat is loved among the Kurds for her many years of service within the YPJ. She started in 2012 before the Rojava movement was highlighted, which means that she have been within the Rojava since its beginning. She stood side by side with Arin Mirkan, a very popular 
Kurdish martyr and she's made it her mission to put forward Arin Mirkan's history to the public which is something that show a personality that isn't selfish a personality that cares about people and a very humble personality her many years in combat have made her commander and gained her a respected place in the Kurdish leadership. Rojda Felat is also a woman which automatically gets a high status among the Rojava supporters and the Kurdish supporters overall since the YPJ got a lot of medial attention in the world at this time. So this is the main reason for why Rojda Felat is so popular among our followers. Now for the first place we got no other than Salahatin Demirtaş. He belongs to the HDP and is from the Bakuri Kurdistan, Turkish occupied Kurdistan and he got as much as 79% of the votes which is 1,242 yes votes and 327 no votes. Salahattin Demirtas is by many called the new Nelson Mandela. He has been imprisoned since 2016 basically for having a democratic campaign in Kurdistan which has been forbidden and opposed by the Turkish state. I really can't come up with one single thing that Demirtas have done to hurt the Kurdish cause. He is very humble and very sure of what he wants to do without winning anything for it in the name of the Kurdish cause. And this is the main reason that Selahattin Demirtas is our most popular leader on our channel. Let me know in the comment section what you think about what my voters voted. Be sure to like this video, comment your opinion down below and subscribe to the channel and follow us on Instagram everything about Kurdistan to see more polls like this and to not miss the next video on this channel.